Okay, now we're going to bring it down uh, home to a little uh, uh, to show you some st stats and some data from around the area, what you came also to see. And uh, we're going to be handing that out in just a second. But first, let's introduce Kalen Ludwig from People's Company. How about it, Kalen? And then we're going to introduce Scott Kelly after that. Come on up, Kalen. Thank you so much, Terry. Um, just to kind of jump right in, I, I really appreciate everyone coming today and um, great turnout. So thank you, Elliot, so much for giving us more of a national perspective of um, the economy and the housing market. Today I'm going to narrow in a little bit more about the Des Moines um, metro area specifically and what we're experiencing and what we've seen kind of in the last couple years. Uh, I do continue to follow the Des Moines metro single family housing statistics. These stats I pull from the Des Moines MLS and the information is based on 18 communities in the metro area. And I've also included um, on, your, on your chair there, there was a little packet of information um, if you guys kind of want to follow along with what I'm saying. If you look at the first slide, uh, let's see. There we go. If you look at the first slide, you'll see a snapshot of how many active, pending, sold, and the supply of inventory for total single family homes, and then also for new construction homes. As of today, March 1st, total active homes on the market is 2,495. And this is down from um, last year, which was 2,792 homes um, at this time last year. An active inventory has continued to creep down through the last several years, and today is at an all-time low. Uh, new construction active homes is 475 homes on the market today, versus 531 single-family homes last year. So again, we have a less new homes on the market um, than we did a year ago in that new construction sector also. Total pending homes um, is 1,063 which is up from last year at 945, which is um, encouraging. And new construction is 257 homes um, are pending currently. Uh, again, this is up from last year at 207. And then total month supply is 4.8 months. Uh, just to note, a stable market is considered to be a six month supply. So this number actually indicates we're in a seller's market. And then 4.8 months is how long it would actually take if no new homes came on the market today. Um, it would take 4.8 months to chew through all the inventory that we currently have listed. And then the number for new construction month supply is five months, so just a little bit higher. And then the second slide shows total sold history from 2007 all the way to 2012. And as you can see, we had 6,593 single-family homes sold uh, in 2012. And out of these, 1,192, or 18%, were new construction. A couple things to note off this slide. Uh, from 2008 through 2011, the total homes sold stayed about that 5,500 mark. Um, and then new construction homes sold has stayed consistent around that 1,000 homes mark. Um, and then in 2012, the Des Moines Metro made quite a big recovery from the four previous years. Total sales went up 18%, and the new construction sales went up 19%. Also, an interesting Des Moines Metro stat is history has consistently showed us that about 18 to 19% of total single-family homes every year continue to be new construction. And this slide also shows days on market. That's what DOM means. Um, the Des Moines Metro, in general, takes a little more than three months to sell a home. And this is a little higher number for new construction, but generally due to the fact that new construction is listed before the home is finished. And total inventory slide shows numbers for all 18 communities that I follow in the Des Moines Metro. The, the top five communities for new construction sales in 2012 um, are the following. Ankeny, with 25% of the new construction market, and actually, it's kind of interesting. Ankeny sales were higher than the next two communities combined. Uh, second place was Urbandale with 13%, and then West Des Moines with 10%, Waukee with 9%, and Grimes um, was in fifth place with 8%. If we go to the next slide, the chart shows the average new construction sale price has continued to rise over the last couple years. 
In 2009 and 2010, the average new construction sale price was about 228,000. And then in 2011, the average sale price of new construction homes rose to 245,000. And this last year in 2012, uh, we ha saw quite a big jump again to 267,000. And so far for in 2013, which you know we're at two months, but um, it actually is higher yet at 272,000. So this is a significant increase, around $40,000 from the last two years ago. Um, when we look back at the last 10 years, this is the highest average new construction sale price that we have seen. Some of the reasons behind this increase of the average new construction sale price includes lot prices are significantly higher than they were a year or two ago um, because banks have worked their way through the developments that they took back in 2008 and 2009. And then also lumber and drywall and a lot of other building uh, materials have seen huge jump price or price jumps. Um, and the market is also, um, we've been being told by different builders that they're anticipating an even higher increase in labor and material costs in 2013. Uh, as land and material expenses do rise, this is either eating into a builder's um, profit margin or inflating the price on new homes. So as new construction prices rise, existing home prices start to look a little more attractive. And overall, I think that's why we believe the market will only continue to recover. As existing homes regain momentum in the marketplace and let sellers get their equity out of their home, this will spur more movement in the housing market as a whole. And then I also wanted to touch on the first time home buyer market. The last couple years, we've seen a lot of builders being able to um, put in houses between the 150,000 to 200,000 price range. And this was a great price point for first time home buyers and sales definitely peaked in 2009 and 2010. Um, one, there was the first time home buyer credit, and then also there was just such a supply of bank owned lots below development costs. So um, builders were able to get, get houses in at a discounted price. Uh, today, there's only 54 new construction homes in that $150,000 to $200,000 price range. And in the last 12 months, we've seen that there's been 363 homes that have sold in that price range. So again, 54 new homes in that $150,000 to $200,000. Um, price range, but in the last 12 months, 363 sold. So we're obviously, you can see the shortage there. And with the cost of land and material on the rise, it is becoming nearly impossible for builders to hit this price in highly desired communities. We are projecting that this will cause those first time home buyers to buy more townhomes and existing homes in the price range, in that price range instead. One of our predictions when we look at the townhome condo market is the market for townhomes is on a comeback but there's a limited number of builders and developers that truly both understand and have the ability to finance these projects. And we believe that there's opportunities for builders to build and develop town home units as this is one of the last areas in the marketplace that there continues to be distressed residential assets. And overall, there's a couple, there's a couple notable things um, that stand out in this market. First off, uh, the housing market has definitely bottomed out in the Des Moines metro area. Uh, secondly, we believe you will see a significant appreciation in home pricing in 2013. And then also the townhome condo market will start to come back in 2013. Uh, one question to think about is, now that new construction market is no longer priced at a discount to the resale market, will it continue to sell? And we believe with record low inventory of existing and new construction homes that the housing market as a whole will return to no normalized levels of price appreciation. And although it may take a little time for the market to adjust to price increases, as long as interest rates remain low, we believe that the market for existing and new construction homes in 2013 should remain bullish. As we sit here, I think another big question um, everyone has on their minds is what will higher interest rates do to the market? And as Elliot uh, alluded to in his presentation, we don't believe we will see higher interest rates without wage inflation. So long as wages inflate at a level that keeps home, buyer, home buyers payments at the same percentage of their monthly income, higher interest rates should not impact pricing. And although Although um, higher interest rates with continued low unemployment and no wage inflation could be devastating to the home pricing. Um, so this sums up what I had to go over today. Um, if anyone has questions about certain areas or certain price ranges, I would definitely um, love to sit down with you. 
And basically, my area of expertise at People's Company is just helping people find a lot, um, a builder, a floor plan, a style that fits uh, your client's uh, price point and, um, and needs. So if you know anybody that is looking for that kind of expertise, definitely would love an introduction.